Okay, so we've covered soil science. We talked about how soils form, the processes involved, and all the characteristics of soils. We then talked about human activities, which disrupt our soils, mostly the removal of vegetation at our surface. We then looked at the consequences, desertification, sedimentation to our waterways, and loss of recharge of our groundwater supplies. So lots of consequences. And at the end of all that, you get a little bit depressed. So what happens now? Well, it turns out we have strategies to conserve our soils, what we call soil conservation and regeneration. And the strategies fall into one of two approaches, either erosion prevention or fertility restoration. Both are going to be important. Both are required. However, I would argue that perhaps erosion prevention might be more effective ultimately, right? Fertility restoration means the, the erosion has already happened and you're sort of like you're being reactive as opposed to proactive. It's more of a band-aid approach, um, although both strategies are going to be necessary. So let's talk about erosion prevention. And, and basically, the, the major strategy with erosion prevention is to keep vegetation on Earth's surface. That's critical. Um, so when we talk about various uh, human activities, one of the major concerns was overcultivation and tillage. Right? We said that typically farmers, at the end of every growing season, plows their fields. Uh, they have annual plants with shallow roots and they want to get rid of those crop residues um, so that they can reduce the likelihood of weed growth the following year and they want to aerate the soils by turning them over. Um, and so conventional tillage does that in the uh, autumn and then all winter long, of course, we know the winds and the water blow over it and run over it and as a result we lose a lot of soil. So one strategy is to say, well, let's simply not plow. We call this no-till or low-till farming. Uh, instead of growing annuals that have shallow roots, uh, a farmer could switch to perennials, where they have deeper, more intricate root networks that help to stabilize the soils, and they grow back every year. So consequently, there is no need to churn the soil over. Um, the problem with that is, is uh, you know, if you don't till, it, there will be some unwanted weeds that will grow um, on your fields. Um, and so oftentimes farmers combat that by spraying herbicide. Um, obviously there's environmental problems with that, but with any solution we have sort of a cost and we have a benefit to it. Aside from no-till or low-till, we can also use what we call conservation tillage. And this uses specialized tillers that cut narrow slits into the field instead of churning up the entire field and disrupting the crops and the crop residues and leaving the field exposed all winter. They just simply do small little slits. And then what they walk, they walk the fields and they inject seeds with a sort of a, a special seed injector gun, a pressurized gun to inject seeds into those splits. This way, the field remains covered all winter long and therefore um, erosion is not as prevalent. Uh, there's been studies done that it shows that both conservation tillage and no-till farming can reduce soil erosion up to 700 times. So pretty amazing, the effectiveness of it. Another strategy is what we call strip cropping. If you notice here, we have two different types of crops. We have a row crop like corn. Corn has stalks and underneath the stalks and underneath the corn, uh, wind can actually blow. And as a result, sediment can be carried away from below the actual stalks or the corn themselves. Um, so to prevent the soil loss from the system, adjacent to a row crop like corn, they could plant a cover crop. That's a low-lying vegetation, grass, rye, any of those types of vegetations could be covered adjacent to the row crop. What this does is it allows for um, the trappage of some of that sediment that gets blown away from underneath the row crop. And in this way, it keeps the soil in place. 
strip cropping can be coupled with what we call contour farming. And so you can see strip crops, so we can see row crops next to cover crops. But in this case, we have sort of a, an interesting funky shape to it. Notice that it sort of looks like a topographic map. That's because the farmer is actually plowing and planting at right angles to the slopes. So this works well in hilly terrain. Not too steep, but undulating hills where runoff could be a problem. So instead of plowing and planting up and down the slopes, they plow and plant perpendicular to the slopes. This way, the plows and the plants act as natural barriers to help reduce and mitigate the effects of runoff and, of course, soil erosion. Now, in more steep environments, it's important to take a little bit more dramatic steps. Uh, we call this terracing. So oftentimes in alpine or mountainous regions, uh, like here in Southeast Asia, they often like to grow rice. And rice paddies grow best in super saturated soils. So they actually cut these benches into the side of the mountain. And these benches run perpendicular to the slopes. Notice at the end of each bench, there's a dike or sort of a, a wall here, almost like uh, a dam. What happens is the rain falls and it supersaturates these benches without the water spilling over each bench. So it keeps the soil in place and that way the rice can grow in these supersaturated soil conditions. Love that picture. This looks like a great place to lay out in a hammock. Wind is also a major problem, right? Wind blows and scours the land, uh, especially in very open regions where there's lots of farmland. The longer and the further the wind blows, the faster it blows. And so when the wind is uninterrupted, it can really pick up a lot of sediment. So farmers oftentimes try to mitigate those wind erosion by actually planting rows of trees, what we call shelter belts or windbreaks. They do that along the perimeter of the field or they actually just disrupt the farming and sort of every few hundred meters they'll plant another row of trees. This way it slows down the intensity of the wind and therefore reduces wind erosion. Not to be confused with shelter belts or windbreaks is what we call agroforestry, or also known as alley cropping. And in this case, the farmer is deliberately planting trees in the same area as they plant their normal crops. In this way, they actually see the trees as part of their crop, right? Whether they're harvesting fuel wood, using fruits, or whatever else they may get from a tree, um, they're growing them in conjunction with other crops. They, all, they obviously slow down wind erosion. They provide shade. That reduces moisture loss through evaporation. They also provide critical habitat for pollinators, as well as provide habitat for predators, which may keep their pest populations down. So as a result, they might have to use less pesticide as well. So. Lots of benefits coming from agroforestry. Finally, uh, we have here polyculture. And polyculture is really important in terms of providing diversity. You know, historically, I think we've tried to maximize food production in the late 20th century by planting giant monocropped plantations of a cash crop, one single, single economically desirable crop. Well, the problem with that is, is that crop doesn't have significant biodiversity. And that crop can ultimately be degraded or eaten by a variety of predators. Well, in order to sort of fool those pests, you can have a variety of crops in place. And maybe it has a taste for one of the crops, but not all of them. Furthermore, each of these crops have sort of different niches. Right? Some of them may have shallow roots, while others have very deep roots. In this way, they're not competing with each other for groundwater supplies. 
Polyculture is really important as well for preventing erosion. These crops may be harvested at different times. They grow at different times of the year. And for this reason, you always have a crop cover on the field. This way the field's never fully exposed to the agents of erosion like wind and running water. In an effort to combat overgrazing with cattle, uh, oftentimes farmers try to manage their pasture and manage the rangeland by allowing the farmer or the, the cattle themselves or whatever grazing animals that they're raising to graze and forage in certain areas for X amount of time. After they've been there for a period of time, they then rotate them. We call this rotational grazing. This way, the cattle don't exceed the carrying capacity of the grassland. This way, they don't compact the soils, eat too much vegetation, and accelerate erosion. And they just keep rotating them through different plots while letting the other plots rest and revegetate and stabilize their soils. Uh, we can also talk about restoring fertility, and I want to look at uh, briefly here crop rotation. Um, this is a, a clever way to both reduce erosion and to bring fertility back to the soil. So it's a little bit of both. Rotation implies that we're growing one type of crop, and after we harvest it, we grow a different type of crop. What that does to eliminate erosion is that it keeps plants and vegetation on the field year round. That keeps the soils in place. The way it returns nutrients to the soil, however, is quite interesting. Certain crops like corn are very hungry crops and they gobble up all of the inorganic nutrients from the soil, all the nitrates and the phosphates, for example and they use that for their growth. Well, after you harvest corn, what happens is the soil can be deprived of those nutrients. And so if you went ahead and tried to plant corn again, there wouldn't be any nutrients available for the next crop. So instead you can rotate it with a legume plant. A legume plants, typically in the bean family, like soybeans or alfalfa, right? These are plants that actually help to return nutrients back into the soil. And it's pretty fascinating on how they do that. The roots of these legumes have these tiny little nodule sacs. And in those sacs exists a specialized bacteria that we call rhizobium. Rhizobium bacteria has the ability to fix atmospheric nitrogen and convert it into nitrates, which is a desired plant food. So in this way, the legumes, which are planted subsequent to the corn, the food-loving plants, ultimately return nutrients back to the soil. So you could actually establish a rotation program where we go from corn, which would gobble up all the nitrogen, soybeans, which would return the nitrogen back to the soil, oats, which would gobble up the nitrogen, then planting alfalfa, and so in this way, you always have a sustainable way to restore fertility and you're keeping the plants on the soil surface to minimize erosion. All right, we're going to stop right there. Those are some techniques for erosion prevention. And uh, we'll look at some more fertility options tomorrow.